Howdy folks and Happy New Year! This will be the very first video that I release in 2023 and I'll be honest with anyone that's clicked on this video just because you thought the thumbnail was catchy or the title caught your eye this video is probably not going to be for you. I'm putting this video out for the folks that have subscribed to my channel for some time now. They've been on this journey with me for the last handful of years. Watch my how-to's and my journey across the country. My rants on what I think Fox body pricing is going to do. It's for those folks and I want to do this for you guys because I want to let you know how much you really truly mean to me and I, I'm not just saying that. I, I swear to you on my children's eyes and I have three of those. Now on that note there's probably going to be some personal rants. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more insight as to how my life works and my day-to-day -day, um, and how that factors into my YouTube channel and the content I produce. So with that all being said, let's start this off. We'll go all the way back to a year ago, beginning of 2022. I got a exhaust kit for this convertible that I know a lot of you have brought up the fact that why hasn't your mom got the convertible yet? Well, let's start with, with that. The plan for this convertible is for it to be my mom's. Yeah, right. What? Yeah, we're her down. That's not down. <laughs> I don't want to go sideways. I've been in that position. <laughs> that one scared me. Remember in Calgary when you first did it and you took me around that corner? Now, this car came to me in very, very stock format. The only thing not stock on this car was the roof had been replaced and it had a respray. That was it. Everything else was bone, bone stock. So, which is fine, all right? I just talked about this in my last video, how stock cars are cool. I think it's great for the up and coming generation to be able to appreciate what a stock car looks like because they weren't even alive when these cars were first released. There's a lot of things that need to be tended to on this car still. It's still got the stock radiator. Um, some of you that have seen my GT40 discussions, I've got a set of heads and an Explorer upper and lower intake for it. Uh, the three bar heads are gonna be going on this car. So there's some things that still need tending to. Now my mom, for those of you that are interested, she just recently moved west and she's living in a more tame uh, climate now. She's She can enjoy a car like this year round for the most part. Uh, they don't get, well, they do get snow from time to time, but very, very minimal. Um, for any of you that don't know much about the weather in Canada, the west coast literally gets the lightest blow of most of the weather. It's, uh, it's a very calm and tame climate over here. And even more calm the further west you go when you get out to the island. So the plan of attack is still for my mom to get this car, but like I say, it, it needs some tending to. And the last thing that I want, and this goes for all of you diehard Fox body folks out there, you know that there's always something that needs tending to on these cars. I would hate to give my mom this car and then have the rad go on her or the heater core or whatever, right? So. I just want to check off all the high level boxes on that car on this car and while doing so the heads and the uh, cam and the upper and lower intake upgrades I mean those will just be part and parcel it's one of those things like if you're gonna do this you may as well do this this and this at the same time now on that note we may as well put some of that to bed the heads are still sitting in the format that I received them in so they haven't been gone through by a machine shop. Heck, I haven't even ordered the trick flow springs for them yet. Um, I need to get after doing all of that. The intake, I'd like to get it ported. I'm not sure if I will or not. Um, that's still a bit of an unknown. And a lot of this, in all honesty, just boils down to finances and time. Um, I've got three kids, as most of you know, a wife. My kids are very busy. They play ringette and that uh, sport doesn't really resonate with a lot of people. Not too many people have heard of it. For what it's worth, it's like hockey 
with no puck. They have a ring instead. And it's typically a girl's sport. Now, we're very, very busy with that. All three of them play. I coach two of the three. The third is now playing at a higher level that I'll be honest, I have no business coaching. Um, she's out playing her old man. Um, I grew up playing hockey and whatever. There's a little bit of crossover between the two sports, but not a ton. So we're very busy there. And then we're busy with just the regular stuff. Any of you watching this that have kids and a family, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, it seems as though the older you get and the further on you get in life, the less hours you have in a day, I deal with that too. So it's tough for me even sometimes to get down here and get a video out, especially one that's worth watching. I mean, sure, I could film whatever, but I always try my best to make the content I'm creating enjoyable for you guys because, I mean, your commitment is, is you actually click on it and you want to watch it. So I don't want to just put out garbage, right? And I'm an avid YouTube watcher. I know what it's like. There's a lot of garbage out there where you just click on a thumbnail and you go like, what is this video even about, right? So I try to make it entertaining. I try to make it so that, you know, with the how-tos, you can get yourself out of a pinch in a hurry. Or with the more opinionated pieces, you can sit down, grab yourself your favorite beverage, bowl of popcorn, whatever, and just watch someone yak about their opinion. And I actually quite enjoy those videos because what I enjoy the most is actually the interaction between myself and, and the folks like yourselves watching it because it's really neat when you, you touch on a point where you get a lot of people that reach out and go, oh my God, that's exactly how I feel. Or you nailed it, right? Like that explains it in a nutshell. So I really do enjoy those. I'm gonna probably try and do a few more of those going forward and uh, along with some how-tos. I, I like those. That's how this channel started in the first place. Um, again, a little backstory. My wife talked me into doing this YouTube channel because uh, as a hobbyist, I'm always working around the garage and, and doing something with these cars. So she's like, why don't you film it and put it out there? I mean, maybe you could help a couple people. So that was literally how this whole thing came to effect. And that's why I'm here talking to you right now. Now, it's morphed into something that I really, truly enjoy. I love doing this. As much as I complain about not having much time to do it, I really, truly do look forward to it, um, especially the interaction. And now, quick little note on that. I've recently had uh, a little, like a new little piece of YouTube open up to me, which is these stories. Howdy folks, so I'm just down here working in my garage and I got a notification saying that I can now apparently send you guys live stories. So with it being New Year's Eve and all, I thought, what the heck, let's start by wishing everyone a very happy and healthy New Year. Which are much like Instagram. I'm way more familiar with Instagram. It was actually my wife that talked me into starting that as well. Um, I understand that platform. I'm still kind of learning YouTube. But YouTube is now resembling Instagram in some respects in that now you can put out these kind of live stories. And I believe they live on my channel for seven days at a time. So if I get a comment from somebody or I just want to give a quick little 15 second update on like what's going on right here right now, I can do that on my channel now. And the way you get to those, uh, I didn't know where they showed up on my channel, but you actually go to my channel's kind of homepage and right at the top on my logo is uh, you'll see a, a red circle. I think it's red and you click on it and you get to see those stories. So anyway, I guess for what it's worth, if you're interested, uh, check those out and I'll try and do more live updates. It's a little more interactive too than just a post, right? Because I try to do those in the community section of my page as, as much as possible, but I was always like, I'd be nice to be able to speak to people about what this post is actually about. I think there's more substance to it. So more of that. Um, 
anyway, yeah, as far as 22 is concerned, uh, great year. Man, I had a lot of fun this year. Um, I, what's been really interesting for me about 2022, now, I talk about the Fox Body community fairly regularly, but I don't know if I've ever had the opportunity to really, like, pour my guts out and my heart and, and tell you guys just how special it is to me and, and how much it means to me that I've been welcomed into it. And I say that somewhat in a reserved manner because I've been part of this community since 97. I've been part of little groups of it, you know, like if I went away to school, you know, a little group of Fox Body friends there, you know, my family and I, we moved from Alberta to the kind of central Okanagan area of British Columbia, and I've met a Fox Body group here. Now, it wasn't until Chris and I, uh, the infamous project, we did this trip across the country. And now, I should maybe mention that Instagram also created this massive community of, of folks from all over the world that we all interact as if we're all living in the same hometown, which is so cool, right? Um, social media has a lot of downfalls, but like this for me is just like the gold star. I mean, how else can you have this many friends and great folks all in one area, all interested in the exact same thing. You, you can't. So social media, from that perspective of things, I know it rots a lot of people's brains, but f yeah, like that, this part of it for me is, has been so cool. Um, now I had this, this somewhat loose electronic appreciation of just how awesome all these folks were that make up this worldwide Fox body community. However, I hadn't met a lot of them in person and it wasn't until Chris and I, the infamous project did this trip across while well, we started in Canada and pretty much did a, a 90 degree L down through the United States. What a trip. Like this will be something that I think will be like my wife will probably say at my funeral, she'll talk about it, you know, like it meant the world to me. One, because I got to do it with somebody who is now one of my best buds. But two, the amount of unbelievable people that I had the opportunity to meet, converse with, hear their stories, <clears throat> both personal and like on their cars. I mean, it was life changing in all honesty. There is really something special about these cars and the people that own them. And when we all get together, we've got this common goal of preserving a generation of Mustang that means a lot to us. We've got a ton of nostalgic memories tied up in these cars. Man, that is just absolute fireworks. So <clears throat> I want to let you guys know, those of you that, that watch and comment, those of you that I got the opportunity to meet in person, like you've literally left a mark on my heart. It, like 1000%. For any of you watching that actually got a, we got a chance to meet at the show and stuff, I'm sure you'll remember. Like I had, there was a lot of dust in the air, if you will. Like I had a lot of water in my eyes more often than I didn't. It was absolutely amazing. And it changed my life. It and what it really did to sum all that up is it just justified the impression that I had of the Fox body community. It justified it to me firsthand, like physically eyes on, you know, not just through a screen, which was what I was so used to because I'm way up here in Canada. Like I said, sure. We've got our little community here, but I had never, never had a chance to meet that many folks all in the exact same boat with the exact same love for these bloody old boxy Mustangs, you know? Um, so now with that all being said, uh, I'm going to get sappy and misty here again, if I don't change the subject, 
it was an absolutely unbelievable year. Um, I did touch on some other projects that I was working on. Um, there was a, a one ton square body Cummins swap uh, Chevy that I worked on. There was a 78 Bronco, which is one of the most coolest rides out there as far as I'm concerned. However, man, I, I nobody wants to see that video. It's crazy. It's, what's crazy about it is for how popular those vehicles are. I figured somebody would want to watch it, but I think at this moment in time, like under 400 people have viewed that video and it was like a full walk around review and what the work that I was going to be doing to the truck and everything. So <clears throat> I, I guess maybe Fox body to Bronco, that love doesn't transfer. I don't know. Um, the square body stuff, interestingly enough, uh, one of my videos on that did very, very, not very, very well, but it, it, it's been viewed and, and it gets viewed quite regularly. So now other things, um, the podcast, okay. The rolling in my 5.0 podcast that I do with again, Chris, the infamous project, one of my now best buds. We had a great year with that. It, uh, it was one more thing to add to the pile <laughs> that, that the pile's already quite big that I'm trying to get done in a, a day or a week or a month, but we took it on, we committed to it. It was admittedly a, a struggle at times, just from a timing perspective. Um, it, it's tough to, to carve out that time with all the other things I've already mentioned to you guys, right? Life and family and videos, uh, work, so on and so forth. But we did it. I'm having an absolute bl blast doing it. And I love the, like the more long form end of that style of content. You get to get into the, the inner workings of, of people or um, thoughts and theories on things, opinions. The opinions fly quite often on that. Um, we definitely get a little more colorful with our language. So for those of you, those of you that have watched it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't get all that colorful on YouTube. But uh, anyway, the pod we do, it's a great way to blow off some steam. Chris and I, off the air, we talk about it quite often, how that podcast, which other than our time commitment, we do have some expenses as far as uh, where it's hosted and, and whatever. But for the most part, it's our time that we're committing more than anything to do it. Um, it we probably have both saved each other thousands and thousands of dollars in psychology <laughs> visits, you know, like shrink visits, because we just get to yak for two, three hours and uh, get everything off our chests. And then he and I usually stay on for half an hour or so afterwards and just kept catch up on each other's lives. So it's been good. Um, I often joke, I used to, I, I don't have time to do it anymore, but I used to play like adult beer league hockey. And one of the best things that I, I used to say that came from that was all of us, we don't realize what everyone's going through until you're in a room of, of like-minded individuals. In this case, it was a dressing room, maybe having a couple adult bevies. And somebody says, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to do here. I'm struggling with this or whatever. And you see a couple guys heads perk up and they're like, oh, you too? No kidding. I am as well. Right. And the same sort of thing happens on the pod. Um, and we get to talk with people from everywhere in the world. In all honesty, last week, no, this week, um, well, depending on when you guys watch this, but uh, we had a fella on the podcast from Bahrain. Now, Chris and I have always been very interested in what the Middle East Fox body community looks like. How did it come to be? Like all of the, the who, what, when, where, and whys of that. And this fella reached out to us and said, Hey man, I'll give you the inside track. And so we talked to this Adnan, absolutely wonderful human being. The guy's imported more than 70 Fox bodies to the Middle East. Um, I don't want to ruin the pod, but Chris and I were always of the opinion that chances are there wasn't many, if any at all, Fox bodies that would have been in the Ford dealerships back in the 80s and 90s. However, as it turns out, there was. 
Now there's not many of those original Fox bodies that were sold as Middle Eastern Fox body cars, but apparently like the VIN tags all written in Arabic and like the, you know, on your mirror, right? Objects are closer than they appear. That's all in Arabic. Like there was an Arabic version of, or a Middle Eastern version of these Fox bodies, which I had no idea of, right? 30 years horsing around with these cars and you still learn something new every day. So if you haven't checked that out and you like uh, long form, just kind of audio style content, please do. I got links in the description down below. You can click on them and check it out. It's on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, finding a way to wrap this video up is a little tricky because as you can probably tell, I like to ramble a bit, but um, I guess maybe I'll wrap it up just by, by saying this. Um, from the bottom of my heart and soul, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming on this journey with me. I cannot tell you how much it means to me. It really, truly melts me that anyone other than my immediate family and friends would care to hear from me. I, it, it really, every day I think about this, like it, it blows my mind honestly, and it, it's hard to put into words. Those of you that have had the opportunity to meet in person, thank you so much for introducing yourselves. Um, you guys all hold a very special place in my heart and always will. And I hope that the one visit that we've had is not the only one. I hope we get to do it more. Until then, I guess we have this, the electronic format of visiting. And I know other than you, you guys commenting, there's not a lot of back and forth because it's more me putting myself out to you. But just know you guys are right here with me all the time. And I quite regularly scan through the photos from Foxtoberfest and stuff. And some of those photos I got with my arm around some of you guys, like it just, yeah, really touching and, uh, and melts me. So thank you very much. Like, Thank you a trillion times for all you guys do. It means the world to me. And uh, I hope that I can maintain the, the bar, the level that you guys have come to expect from me going forward. And I look forward to doing this for the years to come. And as I mentioned earlier, maybe with some little tweaks and changes along the way, we'll see what comes of that. I'll, I'll keep you guys posted, but uh, Thanks again, guys.